Hi, welcome to another Jamovi uh, demonstration example video. We're going to look at a data set that has a bunch of movies from the Marvel and DC universes. Uh, and it's got a couple of different variables collected from all these times. It's got the uh, genre, runtime, the the rating of the movie, you know, PG, PG-13, etc. But then it also has some of the IMDb information. It's got some text information that we're not going to use right now. Uh, it's got some of the, uh, like, the Rotten Tomato scores and things like that, um, and some other ratings. And then the entity here is whether it's in the Marvel or the DC uh, universes. So we'll take a look at these and we are just going to give some basic examples of playing with some summary information and, and taking a look at some of the concepts that we've talked about really briefly in class. So this isn't going to be too long of a video, hopefully, and we'll just jump right in. Uh, so I'm going to go over to my analysis and in this exploration menu, I'm going to start with the descriptive statistics. Um, so let's see, let's take a look at runtime, for instance. And maybe what we'll do is we'll split this up. Actually, let's just take a look at runtime for now. Um, we can change what statistics get shown in this little table over here that you can't really see. Now you can see it. So here it's got N, the number of things. Um, they use a capital N in Jamovi, although I think I would prefer a small N because most of the time we're looking at sample data here, but whatever. Um, they have the number of missing variables, which in this case is none, and then they have some other reporting things. But let's just go ahead and check off some of the things that we're going to want. I'm going to get rid of this missing bit because I don't really care about that. I'm going to keep the mean and the median in there. We've got standard deviation. Maybe I'll leave maximum and minimum in there, and maybe I'll put IQR as well. We also can put percentiles. There's some nice things that you can do here. Um, you can either pick cut points for four equally sized groups. So this is obviously gonna be the 25th, the 50th, and the 75th percentile, but we could change this to like five groups and it'll automatically update what percentiles we want. Or what we can do is just put in our own specific ones. So 25, 50, 75, uh, we could add in the 95th percentile if we wanted and it'll automatically add that in for us. And we'll take a look at these values in just a second. There's a whole bunch of other things that we can put in here. Most of these we do not need right now. Let's just take a little look at what we've got here. So the mean and median runtime are the same cool. Maybe that means that we've got some symmetry. Maybe not. Maybe that's just lucky. Uh, the standard deviation is 23 and a half minutes. The IQR is 25 and a half minutes. We could interpret those. The minimum runtime is 58 minutes and the longest runtime is whew, a whopping 244 minutes. That is a long time. That's just over four hours. Uh, and then we have these percentile cuts so we can see that, okay, there's actually not much that's that long, right? Our 95th percentile runtime is 153 minutes. That's two and a half hours. So uh, only 5% of the movies in here are longer than this 153 minutes. That's not very many. We could, though, add in some plots, and that might help us. A histogram is probably the most obvious plot to take a look at. We can visualize what's going on with this thing. Here's our runtime spread out. We can see that one observation that's really huge. But other than that one, this might kind of look symmetric. Maybe, maybe not. So we could think about like whether the empirical rule might apply here, right? We could think about how many of our observations we expect to be within, you know, certain numbers of standard deviations. Maybe what I'll do is just uh, grab this picture. I can copy it, but it seems like exporting is maybe an easier thing. I know that copying is going to work for me, but you can export this as like a picture file if you need it somewhere. So I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to put it over here in my whiteboard app. Uh, I'll move this over so we can see it pretty well. And now what I'm going to do is take a look at what that summary information was. My mean was 124 minutes and my standard deviation was 23.5. So maybe I'll just write that down over here so that I remember it. So we'll say uh, X bar uh, was, oops, 124 and our standard deviation was 23.5, I believe. Let me just double check. Yeah, it was, cool. All right, so what I can do then is draw in some lines that kind of represent how the empirical rule works here. I can draw in my mean at 124. 
Uh, maybe that'll be like right somewhere around here. It's a little hard to tell exactly where that's going to be because my scale, but that's pretty close. So I could label this as my mean. Uh, maybe I'll write that down. There's our mean. And then we could kind of label in these standard deviation bars, right, at uh, 23 and a half above the mean. So our first standard deviation is going to be um, up at 124. Whoa. Oh, I've got my straight line tool on. There we go. At 124 plus 23.5. And then we'll also have one at 124 minus 23.5. So that's like 147 and a half. Right, so that's just around 150, right around in here. Oops, I wanted my straight line tool on. There we go. I'll just estimate this right around at 150. And then this is like right around 100. And what we're saying is that like two-thirds of our observations or around 68% should be within that. And that looks like it could be reasonable, right? And then we could go out another standard deviation and say, all right, another 23 and a half is up to... Um, just around 173 and a half, right? So just like here. And then our next one is like right around 76 and a half. That's probably right around here. And we're saying that, you know, 95% of our observations should be within this. And that looks pretty good. It looks like these are just like three separate movies outside of here. So like our empirical rule seems to be really be working. And then if we go down another standard deviation... We're down to like just above 50, and um, we're up to almost 200. It's like just a bit shy of that. And this should be almost everything. And it looks like, depending on where that one is, it might only have one observation outside of those three standard deviations. So even though this isn't perfectly symmetric, our empirical rule still gives us a general idea of what's going on it's close enough to symmetric that things will work out pretty well for us. So we can use the empirical rule still relatively nicely. I maybe don't expect that the exact percentages are going to be bang on here, 68%, 95%, 99.7%, but it's probably pretty close. It's given me a good general idea. All right, let's go back to our data set, um, and we can kind of think about all of these values. But what I'm going to do now is start trimming some of these off. So maybe let's just take a look at like, for now, mean and standard deviation, uh, and then the number of values here. This is going to give us a smaller table, but we can start interpreting these values now. We can say, okay, the average runtime is 124 minutes, but then we expect that on average, our run times are going to deviate from 124 minutes by like 23 and a half minutes. Or we could use that empirical rule here to explain what that standard deviation is kind of measuring and saying. So that's a nice thing. We can dive into this a little bit more. And maybe what we want to do is say like, well, is there a difference between the run time for Marvel and DC? So we'll split this by entity. Uh, our table over here is kind of annoying. Um, so you can change this to be variables across rows or columns, whatever is going to make your table look better. Here, if I put our variables across the rows um, or columns or whatever, uh, it's going to kind of orient our, our table a little bit cleaner. Hopefully that's easier for us to, to see and interpret. And I can look now and say like, okay, it looks like, you know, we had more Marvel movies than DC movies in this data set. On average, they're a tiny bit longer, but the standard deviation is smaller. And so they're a little bit more centralized around that mean. Let's take a look at the histograms that are set up. And we can see that that's true, right? It looks like this one on the bottom is a little bit of a tighter distribution than the one up here. We have a little bit more spread there. And that's because of that difference in standard deviation. I personally can't really tell much of a difference in the mean here because that spread is so wide for the DC movies. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where a mean might be. But... On average, we do have that the Marvel movies are, you know, two minutes longer than the DC movies. I don't expect that to really be much of a thing. Um, hopefully, this is a helpful thing to look at. If you'd rather, another plot that we could look at is a box plot. So if you go down here into the histograms, we can go ahead and hit box plot. And now when we scroll down... We'll have this kind of comparison here. See, you can barely see the difference in the medians now. Now, this is showing off median. Maybe we'll, we'll click median on our, uh, on our chart so we can actually see if there is a difference in the medians. There might not be. 
Oh, it's flipped. So our median is 125 for DC and our mean is 123 for Marvel, whereas it was backwards for the means. But now if we go down to the box plots, like I visually can't really tell a difference there. It's only a two minute difference. It's essentially the same thing. But we can see that the DC movies have much more variability, right? They are a wider spread. This middle part of our box, remember, is talking about how wide the range is for the middle half of our data between the 25th and the 75th percentiles. And we can see that that's more spread out for the DC movies than it is for the Marvel movies. It looks like we have a couple of really long Marvel movies and a couple of pretty short DC movies. So that's that may be just the difference in those averages, right? That one or two long Marvel movies and that one or two, however many are there, short DC movies. That might be the thing that's pulling those means uh, away from each other. If you would rather see a different type of box plot for this, you can go into the survey plots. These box plots, I think, are a little bit better in some sense and also a little bit worse in some sense. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and toss in runtime. I'm going to group by the entity here. Um, and I am going to go into the continuous plots. And I'm going to take off the violin. I'm going to leave box plot and data on there. The reason I'm going to leave data on here is that the box plots don't actually put in the data points that are outside of that one and a half IQRs away from the median like our other box plots do. So here we have these two data points that are outside of that kind of common range. We're technically, we're like flagging these as possible outliers. Um, and the, the survey plots data uh, or, or box plots don't do that. So I like to put on the data thing so we can see these points out here. But I do like the way that we stack these a little bit. Um, it changes the coloring um, by the group, which I think is kind of nice. You can figure out which one you think is a little bit easier to interpret. You can imagine that if we have a lot of data, then leaving these data points on here gets really cluttery. And so it might be nice with really big data sets to just have a nice clean box plot, although we are missing those flagged outliers. Not sure why they decided to not include those. Um, this is probably a nice standard plot that we can use, although it doesn't look as clean and nice with the coloring as this one. Oh, well. Uh, what else can we do? What we can do is change our, our data set a little bit, and we can take a look at, like, runtime split by something else. Um, maybe what I'm going to do, though, is take these out completely, and let's take a look at... Uh, the IMDb ratings split by the like PG, PG-13 ratings here. All right, so we've got some weird things to notice. If we wanted to do some cleaning of our data, we could notice that like approved and passed, I don't even know what those mean in terms of MPA ratings. That might be uh, an outdated thing because if you look at our actual data, up here, we can see that some of these are from 1944. And there it is, there's approved right off there. That's from our 1944 Captain America movie. So like, I don't really know what that means. Um, we could look it up and try and figure out if this is more closely going to be like categorized as PG or PG-13 nowadays and change that if we'd like. I'm going to leave it for now. Same thing with past. My guess is that this is an outdated rating uh, from an old movie or something else. And we could probably find out how to fit this in. Um, Anyways, let's take a look at the, uh, remember, we're looking at the IMDb ratings um, by these uh, approval ratings. And so we can look and see, okay, it looks like the PG-13 movies on average have pretty high ratings as well as the R movies compared to the PG movies. Now, we'll notice that there's just not a lot of PG movies, which makes sense for this data set. We're looking at Marvel and DC movies. There's probably not a lot of them that are made without the kind of violence and stuff like that that we expect in superhero movies. But we can do some comparisons of the means and the standard deviations. It looks like there's a little bit of a tighter um, rating, uh, less spread out for the R-rated movies. Looking at the histograms is probably not super helpful, especially with these two that are approved and passed in here that just have the single observation. But we can at least get an idea of these measures of center and see how they're changing by these ratings. It might be a little bit more helpful to take a look at the box plots here. I think this does a better job of visualizing what's going on. Again, we could see these approved and passed box plots that just have the single data point. So we could do some work to get rid of that. I'm not going to right now, but we could. Um, 
But we can do some nice comparison here and see these medians and the, the spread outness of our distribution. Here we can see that these R-rated movies have a much tighter box plot than the PG-13 ones. And so the PG-13s have way more variable popularity rankings. Um, oh, that's the other survey plots that we don't need. So that looks pretty good. Uh, one other thing that I do think is pretty cool, and I don't know if it's super helpful right now, but we can actually split by more than one variable. So we're going to split by rating and entity, meaning we're going to go up here and we're going to have tables now that have multiple ways of splitting things off. So for the PG movies, we're going to say, okay, what about the Marvel movies and the DC movies separately? And the PG-13 movies, we can see what about the Marvel movies and the DC movies separately? And we can do some comparison of the means and the medians and if we wanted, um, but the standard deviations here as well. So maybe I'll look at these R-rated movies that had pretty high rankings uh, or ratings on IMDb. And we can see that the DC movies in general are a bit higher rated have a bit more variability as well there. We could take a look at these plots. Again, we're going to see these like singular Marvel and DC uh, approved and past ones aren't super helpful. But we could see if there's some differences in the histograms between all of these. It might be helpful to take a look at the box plots here. So we've got this nice legend here that tells us what the color represents. Again, approved and past we don't really care about, but... This kind of olive is PG, this kind of green is PG-13, and this violet is R. And we could take a look and compare between Marvel and DC. If you want, you can switch the order of these, and it'll change the way that we split these apart. So now the different colors are representing Marvel versus DC, and we're just grouping the PG movies, the PG-13 movies, and the R movies together. And so we can compare by Marvel and DC that way. So you can figure out what is best to be interpreted, how we might kind of represent our data and see some of the differences in these measures of center and measures of variability that we might care about. For instance, we can look at this PG-13 category and notice in this picture, it's pretty obvious that the Marvel movies have a higher IMDb rating and a tighter spread here. These DC movies are much more variable, have a lower IMDb rating. That might be something that we investigate. Uh, this might lead us into some open questions that we could ask about this data set if we cared to. So hopefully that's helpful to just see how we can play around with these measures of center and spread uh, and plotting those, visualizing them, thinking about all the concepts that we care about in this class. Good luck on your lab. You're going to be looking at a different data set. It's going to be a data set of avocado prices, uh, and you'll be doing a similar kind of thing, splitting it up by different sorts of variables, trying to look at some trends between those things, and hopefully that'll be helpful to see this example. Good luck.